Hey, how you doing? It's Elliot Wilcox from TrialTheater.com, and we're here in Florida. It's a gorgeous day, and so because it's a gorgeous day, I'm not going into the office. I'm not putting on a white shirt. I'm not putting on a jacket. And I'm not putting on a tie. But that doesn't mean I can't go to. I, you know, hey, I still have to do a little bit of work, right? And today, what I want to do is I'm gonna sit out here, enjoy my diet, Dr. Pepper. But the other thing I want to do is I want to share with you an important tip that's going to take your cross-examination skills to the next level. Now, hopefully, you already understand the difference between direct examination and cross-examination, right? But just, just in case you don't, here's a real quick basic primer on the philosophy differences between direct and cross. Indirect, you actually care what the witness has to say because the witness is the source of all the information. It's almost as if you don't... The, the really good direct examinations are the ones where you're curious and you ask the witness for information. Mr. Jones... What did you see? Mr. Jones, what did you hear? And then he gives you the answer. But in cross-examination, the exact opposite is what you want. You don't want to ask the witness for any information. You want to tell the witness the information. You're the one who's actually going to testify during direct, or pardon me, during cross-examination. For example, the light was red, wasn't it? And he agrees or disagrees. The birds were in the sky, weren't they? He agrees or he disagrees. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is, is that you're the one who's testifying, and he either says yes, says no, or tries to fudge and tries to give an explanation, which is, on cross-examination is a load of fun when somebody tries to go off like that. So understanding those philosophical differences, the important thing that you need to take away to improve your cross is you need to get it. You are the one who's testifying during cross. Now, what that means if you want to improve your cross-examination, I'm going to give you a simple tip here, probably one you've heard before, but maybe one that you're not applying. Here's the best, absolute best thing that you can do to take your cross-examination to the next level. You follow one simple guideline. You ready? Here it is. Every single question that you ask must be a leading question. That's it. Oh, wait, I still have more tape. Hold on. Um, here's the thing. Most of the lawyers I know know what that rule is. Most of the lawyers I know try to follow that rule. But you know what? After about a minute or two, they stop asking leading questions. Now, a lot of, a really good couple of lawyers I know will go in maybe three minutes before they stop asking leading questions. But then something will happen. They'll get into a discussion. They'll have a question about the witness. They'll have a, a question about what he saw. They want to get into a fight. They want to do something. And they break the rule. And they stop asking leading questions. If you really want to be a stellar cross-examiner, the one thing that you need to do is write that rule out and never, ever, ever violate it during cross-examination. Here's the rule again. Every question that you ask during cross-examination must be a leading question. That means that if you ask a question that starts with who, what, where, how, when, why, or, oh God, the absolute worst one you could ever ask is any question that be has the word explain in the title. If you ask a question with any of those, you've violated the rule about asking leading questions. Now, you've seen the prior podcasts and the, and the prior articles that I've written about how to ask a leading question. The important thing that I want you to take away from this is that if you just follow this one rule, you will have a better control of the witness than almost 80 or 90 percent of the lawyers that I see. And keep in mind, I see a lot of lawyers. I train a couple hundred lawyers every single year. I certainly have the opportunity to watch hundreds more in court. They don't ask leading questions during cross-examination, and as a result, their cross-examinations fall apart. They cede control to the witness. The only tool, the only tool that you have to improve your cross-examination, the only tool that you have to exert control and to help you testify is the leading question. It's the only thing that the, the rules give us. So if you give up that power, you're giving up control of your cross-examination. So this is a real short video because the point is simple. It's the implementation that's difficult. First, start by writing down the guideline. Every, promise, make a promise to yourself. I want you to stand in front of the mirror. I don't know, maybe do the Boy Scout promise and say, I promise every single question I ask during cross-examination will be a leading question. Maybe that's too much, but start off with that. Write it down on a sheet of paper. 
every question I ask will be a leading question. Then, have someone sit with you, have someone watch. And, and you can start off in motion hearings, you can start off during just maybe one section of a deposition, or, or maybe when you're doing the rehearsal with your client and prepping them for what their cross-examination is going to be. Sit there and start to practice it. And when you have someone else sit there and watch, if you ask a question that's not a leading question, have them ring a bell, have them interrupt, have them interject, do something to draw attention to the fact that the question you asked was not a leading question. Third, get in the habit of learning how to ask leading questions. And there's other free articles on my website that will help you out with how to do that. Just that one simple tip, and your cross-examination is going to be better than it ever has been before. So, short tip, good point, follow it up. For more free tips like this, there are a lot more articles, a lot more videos, and some podcasts as well, just visit www.trialtheater.com, and I'll provide as many tips for you as I can to help you improve your trials and help you win your very next jury trial. Take care.